Hi everyone, let's talk about Keeper. And I love this game, this is fantastic. I I was blown away the first time we played it by just how, how you are constantly barraged with interesting, meaty choices throughout the entire game. And there are so many to think about. Uh, I think, you know, just the, there is a lot involved, I'll say up front, the, the rule book, just reading through it, it's, it's, there's quite a bit, it has to, it repeats itself quite a bit, but I think it's trying to, it's trying to, as clearly as possible, get across these, uh, these concepts that are quite unique to this, in that, you know, whenever you place a keeple, you have to ask everyone if they want to join you, and one person gets to, and they will get uh, the advantage of the space that they go to there, and if there is already one keeple there, then you can lie it down to get the bonus. Uh, there's a lot of, you know, if, if this colour matches, you get this many actions, and if this keeper joins, you get this many actions. It's very simple once you've gotten the hang of it, but it is strange to be explained to you, but it's such an interesting system of having, you know, certain colours of these keeples, uh, when do you hold them back and when do you join people? When do you, you know, hold out for, you, you're sure that someone's going to do this action, so you want to save it, so you're not the person that's uh, leading it, so you get to play one of your keeples on someone else's turn. Sure, you're giving them an extra action point to whatever they're doing by joining them, but you are not spending an action to it, and the sooner you can get all of your keeples out of the way, the sooner you can start doing lay down actions and thereby get loads of bonus things. If you could, like, I, I wonder if, you know, you could just give up on a load of keepers and be missing quite a few. You don't want to be missing too many because then it's just going to ruin you, but enough so that you can really quickly fly through it and get a country board with a decent, uh, a decent set of actions on and just take, keep taking lay down actions. And, and once you have done all the laydown actions on your country board, you can start doing them on other people's country boards as well. So the laydown actions would end up being really, really varied and powerful. But there are, there are so many things. So the getting a ton of keeples on your keep can give you a load of uh, resources or animals, and then it's going to incentivize you to put your keeper out earlier on, which then, as soon as you put your keeper out, it makes everybody else think, well, I'm not placing there but you know you're inevitably going to be tempted to once you know you get the opportunity of not having to waste one of your actions to go on there uh, getting stuff on your personal board is very useful because then nobody can follow you so you're getting uh, that action to yourself really uh, the choice of buildings that comes out is really going to change the game up a bit as well. Though, depending on when, you know, the, the gem stuff comes out. Like, gems weren't a factor in our first game whatsoever, just because uh, the, the buildings did come out right at the start. We didn't buy them, and then nothing else came out that would uh, make them. So we we could only kind of get them from here, and we didn't really uh, we didn't really go into it very much at all. But depending on what's going to come out, there's still stuff in that bag, and a lot came out of the bag in this example game. But depending on what comes out of that is really going to change the game up as well. And the fair tiles and what we put, what we decide is going to come out on the country boards. That's completely different. And it's, you know, lovely and magical getting to play with these lovely foldy boards. I don't think I will ever get over the magic of just constantly folding these out over and over and over again. It's a game where I know that we have barely scratched the surface of at all. But there is, there's going to be so much to explore in this, even when we get to know, you know more of the tiles and things and we get more used to the, the, the flow and stuff, there, there's still so much that can change over the course of a game and so much, so much interaction with the, between the players that none of it is negative whatsoever. You are all, it's, it's always, uh, yeah, you've always got to think of, you know, is this player going to do this first? When do I put my... Keeper out. I desperately want to play as country board, but I don't want to put anybody off putting more keepers on there. But if I wait, somebody else might do it instead. And the same for the actions. You want to hold out so that somebody else can do it. But eventually, you know, if you're waiting to get the resources and holding out so somebody can do that so you can get an extra resource, what if someone does the upgrade or the build action now and you're not ready for it? There's so many things that have got to be floating around in your head and it is just beautiful trying to puzzle it out oh, i absolutely love it uh the you know downsides I, I mentioned yeah that the rule book is it's not a bad rule book at all but it is explaining i think strange concepts so it's uh you know be ready for you know 
just be ready for, to be a little bit confused as you're reading through it. But you know, once you have played through the flow of uh, a few turns, you, it just starts clicking really, really easily. And there's even, I haven't got the bottom of the box with me, it's over there, but there are flowcharts all over the inner, inside edge of the box to kind of guide you through these things if you get confused. So yeah, I don't think it's a bad rule book at all. It's just trying to explain very, very strange things. Uh, other than that, I, I, there's nothing really I say against it at all. I can't really talk about comparisons to the other things in the Key series because I haven't played, I've only played Keyflower and it was years ago. And I remember really liking it, Rachel didn't like it, but it was down to the auctions in that, I think. So yeah, very vague if I tried to say anything about any other Key games, but I absolutely loved this. And you can also get, when it was on Kickstarter and it's teased throughout the, um, throughout the rulebook, I don't know if you can see that little guy there. They did the beautiful painted character meeples, and you know, although it was incredibly tempting to get them, uh, I went for the standard edition, but it has got an even more beautiful uh, version where all of these guys hold the tools that they're supposed to hold as well, you know, the ones that are printed on the country board spaces so that you can tell them apart if you're colorblind as well. So that's another little positive. But yeah, nothing but just praise and excitement for Keeper. Uh, thanks a lot for watching, everyone, and I'll see you for the next game. Bye.